Hi, this is Round by Round with James Gogi. We're here in McAllen, Texas at the Dirty Owls Bayou Grill. Uh, this edition of our show, it's a special show. It's not about the amateur game. It's about the pro game, which I'm involved in. And it's going to be at the highest level, the elite level. Uh, first, we're going to talk about uh, Triple G and his performances past Saturday. Uh, man, just tremendous. <laughs> what else can you say? That's the only word, you know. Pretty much only word I could describe that uh, that uh, that beatdown he gave Dave, David Lemieux and then me and my guest to my right, 2015 USA National Golden Gloves champion, outstanding fighter of the tournament, Pablo Ramirez. We're gonna talk about the Canelo Cotto uh, fight coming up, which is creating a lot of buzz in the boxing world. But first, let's talk about the Triple G fight last week, Madison Square Garden. Has suspected. He took apart David Le, David Lemieux. Uh, technically, systematically broke him down round by round. Uh, the key to his victory was he broke him down intelligently. Okay, uh, through a systematic breakdown. Okay, using his punishing jab, Damn. brutal body shots, and his great boxing skills and defensive skills to you know. Awkward to, style. What do you that, mean? That he has a little awkward style, hard to hit. Who, uh, Golovkin? Golovkin. Is that really... in and out style he has? Yeah, that was. Is that European? Th look, exactly. Is exactly. that European amateur background? Three hundred forty-five fights, three hundred forty vi victories. Okay, he he knows how to box in and out, control range and distance with that jab. That started it, controlling him with that jab, busting him up, busting his face up. Cause like on my radio show, uh, the sweet science with Don Chargan and James <laughs> Gogi. The three victories, the three keys to victories was busting them up with that jab, bust, you know, wearing them down with body shots, and good def good defense, using his footwork to move in and out and not get hit by that big left hook of D David Lemieux. As the fight goes on, goes down, Lemieux is a tough piece of meat. You just don't put it in the oven and bake it. You gotta let it thaw. You gotta you gotta thaw him out. You gotta marinate him. You gotta soft him, soft him, soft him, him up. Do it systematic beat down like Golovkin did. Now, what, you, what was your t interpretation of the fight? Uh, Triple G. Triple G's a monster. What can I say? <laughs> what did you, you know, like about him, Pablo? He's huh? strong. He, I, he, he's real strong. I like his jab. You know, as I was watching the fight, I was looking and I was like, damn, like, that's a powerful jab. Like, the jab starts off everything. The jab allowed him to, the jab allowed him to do everything he did in that fight to break him down. The jab started everything. everything. And his counter punching too was great, but everything started off that, that jab. jab. Like he said, he broke him down round by round with that body shot. Body shots broke him down, which you know, as they say, you know, chop it down. Chop it down the tree. Had, had come down, and um, that's exactly what he did. And he's in real. He's smart in the ring, real smart. And that's exactly what he did. Outbox his fighter, broke him down round by round, finished him off. Well, that's what do you call? That's how you win fights at the uh, at the top level. Just like Pablo, when he goes to the Nationals, hmm. when he won the National Golden Gloves, brain, smartness, okay? Everybody's good. Everybody can fight, but it's the smarter ones that are going to come ahead. And that's what Golovkin did. He took less less punishment as possible. And like I said, it was just a you know a systematic uh, process in the way he broke down David Lemieux. And now, because of that great performance, you know, he's going to be – you know, he wants the winner of Cotto Canelo if one of them guys got the balls and courage to step in the ring with him. <laughs> Easy work for Triple G. <laughs> Easy work. Any of the both of them. I, I, as of right now, I don't think anybody has a chance with Triple G as of right now. He's just a total monster. He's a beast right now. I, as I think he'll knock out both, Cotto and Canelo. <laughs> that's why you don't see him. Not, that's why you're going to see the winner of this fight be kind of hesitant to want to fight him, especially the... The way he looked the other night and how dominant he looked. Them guys don't want that type of beating. <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, that was a uh, Triple G. In fact, I got to, uh, I just had a show in Fantasy Springs Casino with Golden Boy with my guy Keandre Gibson this week. And I got to see Abel uh, Sanchez, the trainer of Triple G, you know, congratulated him and pretty much told me, you know, it was uh, what we talked about on, mm -hmm. on how the, what the game plan they had going into the fight is pretty much what we just talked about and everything. So congratulations to Abel. And uh, the Gennady, uh, it's just gonna open them, you know, open the doors for bigger fights up 
out there and his exposure and his international uh, marketing uh, you know, <laughs> is getting bigger and bigger. Okay, he's he's growing. And what, when he, what weight is uh, Andre Ward in? Uh, Andre Ward, I hear, is going to be moved up to 175. So I don't think that fight's going to happen. Man, that would be a great fight. Yeah, that would be a great fight. Yeah, that's a that's a fight. Yeah, that. It could happen still. Andre might, you know, go back down to 168, but they're talking about a fight with him and Kovalov sometime next year. Sergey Kovalov, the uh, reigning WBO light heavyweight champ of the world. But the next fight we're going to talk about is a fight that's been buzzing since it's been made. It was a very, very, very tough fight to make because of Miguel Cotto, pain in the ass, and his pain in the ass lawyer, that yeah. Gabby guy. Can't remember his name, but you know they really. Uh, Oh, they made it very, very difficult to make this fight. You know, the demands they made and this and that and this and that, all the little stuff. But they finally got the fight made. Thank God, Golden Boy and uh, Rock Nation, his promoter, finally got the deal done. And it's going to be November 21st at the Mandalay Bay. It's already sold out. Don't even think about going there, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, I might be fighting on the undercard. They told me I have a guy we might be fighting on the undercard, so I'll be there. But as far as everybody else getting tickets, you're going to have to stay home. <laughs> What do you think? You're, you're, what do you think about that fight, Pablo, coming up? Miguel Cotto. I got Miguel Cotto on, uh, winning the fight. You know, I think his ability. Before to, you talk about the fight, what do you? I mean, what do you think about it? Puerto Rico versus Mexico. That's, a big, that's the that's the main <laughs> rivalry right there. You know, it's gonna be a great show. They're gonna put out a great show, of course. You know, you know. But, but you got two countries. Exactly, and two rivals too. Well, let me give you a history of a Puerto Rican rivalry, or a Puerto Rican-Mexican rivalry. It's a huge, huge rivalry. The last big rivalry I saw, Puerto Rico versus Mexico against, with a national, Puerto Rican national and a Mexican national. Puerto Rican national meaning Miguel Cotto, Mexican national meaning Sao Canelo Alvarez fight each other where the anticipation uh, has been great. The last time I seen it was back in 82, 83 when Wilfredo Gomez from Puerto Rico got knocked out by Salvador Sanchez, the late great Salvador Sanchez uh, from Mexico. Oh, you could, you could feel it in the air, the intensity, the animosity between both countries. You know, both countries really wanted to, their fighters to win, but this fight is different. This is, you know, forwarded, you know, 30 years later. It's not only between two countries, but the whole boxing community worldwide. Mexico, uh, Puerto Rico, all over the United States, the uh, Canada, Mexico, in Europe, and England, oh, they're anticipating this great matchup. Okay, so it's just not Puerto Rico versus Mexico. It's a world, you know, it has world global implications. That's how big this fight is. And uh, Oscar De La Hoya thinks he's going to do very, very well on pay per view because of the stylistic matchup. Both guys are got that physical, aggressive, attacking attitude, and both guys can are explosive and they can hit. So you know. It, it's it's gonna be uh, you know what I mean. Like it's sold out already. Don't it's sold out. So buy it on pay per view if you're gonna if you're gonna watch it. Now he picks Cotto to win. Okay, why? Why do you got Cotto to win? I think his ability to move inside the ring, the way he cuts the ring, the way he cuts the ring really. I think he's one of the best fighters who I think can cut the ring really good. And uh, he's a smart fighter, strong fighter too. And um, overall, I I got. Cotto winning, winning the fight. Okay, what do you what do you see in Canelo Alvarez? I mean, he's he's a pretty he's damn fast. good fighter too. He he's fast, but I don't think he, I don't think he's strong enough for Cotto. You know what I mean? Yeah. He throws. He showed everything when he fought Mayweather. He was scared. Like I don't know. It was different. Like I saw a total different Canelo. I lost everything for Canelo after the Mayweather fight. I mean, he didn't. You know. <laughs> he lost man, respect for him. Yeah, of course, <laughs> man. You know. Let me tell you this. There's a lot of pressure on Sal Alvarez going into this fight. Especially okay, since he came back from a loss of Mayweather. No, no, yeah. it's just it's the legacy of Mexican fighters. He's if he wants to be con be considered one of the greats of all time, like Salvador Sanchez, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., Carlos Zarate, Ruben Oliveras, he's got to beat a signature guy, you know, and put it on his resume to do it. Right now, he hasn't beat no one of significance. His first big super fight he had to Austin Trout. Nah, Austin Trout, nah, not Floyd Mayweather. That he was lost, his big, but he, he lost. lost, exactly. So he's getting the second, rare second opportunity to fight in a big mega fight to win where he's going to be a favorite to win where, hey, he could put him on the map and join Chavez, 
Zarate, uh, Salvador Sanchez, and all the other Mexican greats. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on Sal Alvarez going into you know right now he's just a built up media hype, you know, with nobody on his uh, resume to you know be included with all time Mexican greats. Okay. So what do you got winning. One second. Before we go into that, I want to talk about this, about Canelo, go, you know, going in the fight. Cotto don't have that pressure. He's already in the Hall of Fame. When his career is done, the next few fights, he's he already got a place in the Hall of Fame. Of course. Okay? So the pressure ain't on him, okay? He's just going to make his money and go in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Whereas Canelo, ooh, that pressure is going to be tough. Ooh. It's, so, like I said... Let's, let's see how he, you know, like I said, Sal Alvarez, especially the Mexican people, you lose, he loses this fight. Whew. A lot of his credit, credibility is going to go down the, you know, go down the drain. Well, he lost a lot of his fans when he lost to Mayweather. So let's see how that goes. But me going in the fight, before I talk about who's going to win, uh, key to victories. Man, Cotto, in order for him to win this fight, and I tell you what, let's go that key to victories. I got Miguel Cotto winning this fight, okay? At first, before this fight was made, I always thought Canelo would win this fight. And that's before he got with Freddie Roach, okay? Freddie Roach revitalized his career. Three things I've seen Freddie Roach done, he has him boxing better, using his footwork, working his jab, using his head and upper body movement, making his defense a lot better than what it was before he got to Freddie Roach, okay? So... When you go into a big fight like this, the difference between winning and losing is that defense. So that's why I got Cotto winning this fight. Plus, his, his explosive left hook can hurt you at any times. Now, the reason why I got him over got him over Canelo in this fight is because Sal, he has a problem of guys that move, okay? Sal Alvarez is a guy that he fights best when you come right at him, like, like Angulo, like James Kirkland. He's a counterpuncher. He likes to kick back, block, and counter. Look for your openings, look for your mistakes, and counter off those mistakes. Cotto ain't going to do that. Cotto's going to be boom, 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 stepping around him. So Canelo ain't going to have no you know, target to hit because he's going to be around him. And that's going to be the difference in the fight, okay? Canelo's going to have to press the action, establish his jab right off the bat, okay? Cotto's going to consistently work his jab, you know, during the rounds of every fight. Canelo, he takes breaks in the fight. Watch. Four, fifth round, he starts taking breaks. He, you know, he quits throwing punches, lays on the ropes, and he's sporadic. He, you know, he's very sporadic when he throws his combinations and everything. He's not consistent, where Cotto is going to be consistent. Freddie, he's got, I'm pretty sure Freddie's been in big level fights like this. They're going to break, they're going to break Canelo down, take him in the later rounds and, you know, go for the stoppage, knowing Freddie Roach, okay? He hmm. wants to, if he wins... He ain't happy with a win. He wants to go out with a spe spectacular knockout. But I really believe the keys, like I said, is that footwork, the jab, and the head, up, head and upper body movement for Cotto that's going to prevent him from getting hit a lot by those counter shots and that explosive left hook. And that's going to be the difference. Whereas Canelo, he's more of a guy that you, if you ain't standing in front of him, he has palms the moving targets. Mayweather, Arizlandi Lara. So that's why, plus Canelo... Like the way the way he trains is the way he fights. You know, he doesn't maximize his uh, potential in his gym workouts. Okay, to me, I don't think he trains that hard. I've been being in camp with him for two weeks when he fought Mayweather and just watching him on the internet. You know, he, he just doesn't really push himself. You know, like you should, like Oscar De La Hoya when I used to watch him train on Floyd Mayweather. You know, they really pushed themselves in camp. Where Canelo, uh, if he's tired, you know, you know, he'll start slowing down in, during his workouts and everything. <laughs> But like I said, that's the, my keys to victory, and the, me and Pablo are in agreement that Cotto, you know, will beat the odds and upset, you know, Canelo Alvarez and uh, retain his uh, WBC champion. And when he does that, I guarantee you he ain't gonna fight McGill. Uh, he ain't gonna fight Triple G. <laughs> no way, no way. So what else, Pablo? Anything? Any last comments from uh, this fight? It's gonna be a great fight, and pretty much you, you know we see the same thing, correct? Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, just stay tuned for the 24-7s. They're about to come out too, right? 24-7, yeah. So stay tuned for that and be ready for the fight. It's going to be a great fight. Great fight. Pay-per-view. Buy your pay-per-view. HBO pay-per-view. November, November 21st. I'm going to pick Miguel Cotto in the upset. Thanks.
How many minutes?